Gotta think a title fight could be next for Kai Kata France. A huge performance tonight. I know I'm the best in the world, so I just gotta back myself. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. <laughs> that's dangerous. <laughs> Listen to me, we're out of here. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. I want to start in a different way from instead of saying, Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. We have Kai Kara France. Uh, coming on in a little while, uh, fighting, of course, uh, in this Saturday's main event. Uh, Benjamin Levy Aguilar is first. He is an actor, um, and he is going to be on right now with us. Sorry to be doing this so sloppy, but we're jumping right on because we have two guests kind of uh, tight uh, back-to-backs. We want to make sure we don't screw anybody. He's on Chicago PD, uh, Benjamin is. So let's get uh, Benjamin in when he can, and it's good to see you, Matt. Good to see you. And Sorry I'm- to yap so fast. I'm just trying to get it all done. Hey, well, hey, man, look at this guy. Hey, what's up? How you doing, man? Benjamin? Good. Can you hear me well? Yes, you sound great. Oh, great. Yo, um, Matt, I, I love your fight, man. I, with, uh, I'm, I've seen your fights and stuff. I'm really, really big fan. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it, Benjamin. And I see yeah. that you're a martial artist as well. You do uh, Krav Maga. Yeah, man, I did. I mean, I did Krav Maga growing up in Guatemala because I... I worked with the Israeli embassy, so they'd have people from the IDF come and teach us. And Guatemala is a crazy country, so it, it, it go. It, we, I did it. I learned it the hard way, the good way. You know, it wasn't like a commercialized way. It was really it's military. Self-defense. Yeah, really cool. Self defense. Yeah. Self-defense. What did you yeah, do for the re- uh, Israeli embassy? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I was working with them. You know, in, in Guatemala, teaching bodyguards actually tactical shooting and. Uh, and Krav Maga, that was like my job before I became an actor. Um, oh, you were teaching bodyguards and teaching martial arts to the to the Israeli embassy employees? Yeah, people from the Israeli embassy and the government. Like, yeah, people that would work with like the candidates and like, you know, I was just into it. I always wanted to learn a little bit and I did boxing and I did some amateur fights growing up. And then uh, and then when I came to L.A., uh, it was funny because I, I, I was like, I don't want anything to do with fighting. But my first role that I got cast in in a short film, it was called Spirit. So shout out to Nico and Cole. They cast me in my first short film. And it was an MMA fighter cutting weight. And I had never done that. So I went through the whole weight cut process. Uh, and I lost like, I don't know, it was it was a lot, a lot. Um, I did the whole sauna, suits, the trash bags, the, the towels. Really well, cool. It- yeah, hey, Jimmy, you want to say something? Oh no, I was just saying, it sucks if you're if, if cutting weight is rough enough, but if you're shooting something, a lot of times you have to do two, three, four, five takes, and instead of just cutting it naturally, you have to make yeah. that stretch over a two week period for camera angles. So, did you actually have to do it more than uh, a fighter would for a fight, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me think. Uh, well, I mean, you know what it was? I had to cut thirty pounds in thirty days of just oh. of, of just. Uh, muscle and sh- and shit because you're again you're shooting for a long so you can't do a weight cut of water and look skinny for so long you know what i mean so i just cut a lot of weight and then at the end the day that we were shooting the actual weigh-in scene i did like 10 pounds of water or something ah, wow. shoot. yeah hey, now do you watch mixed martial arts a lot you enjoy the fights the ufc and whatnot yeah man i'm a big fan i'm a big big fan that's wild now now look a lot of martial arts out there, it, it, it's not gonna, it, it, it's not gonna, they're not gonna, it's not gonna hold water in the mm-hmm. octagon. Like Wing Chun by itself. I used to do Wing Chun. I had a wooden dummy in the garage. Yeah, I, you no. know, it's the trapping range. You, the best thing is if you watch two Wing Chun guys fight, it starts off like a thing out of Yip Man, and then it's yeah. the worst white belt on the floor fucking yeah like oh look at this and then this is yeah. horrible but there's other martial arts like krav maga now normally if somebody goes well my art's too deadly and it's for the uh, art, usually that's the worst thing you could hear because it's like oh my god uh, but yeah. krav maga is based on a lot of fucking whoop, they'll poke yeah. your eyes and they'll grab your throat so 
but you, I, you know, yeah, okay. sorry to interrupt you. I, 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 I gotta be honest, like that was one thing that really uh, bothered me. It was like a lot of people was like, no, we don't spar because it's too deadly. I was like, if you don't spar, then you don't know. You have to spar. You have to. Because of the timing. I was going to ask you, that's the next mm. note. Like with Krav Maga, is there anything like that with face masks? A lot, a lot of it is based on block. I, you can tell me better. You know better than me because you are yeah. a black man in it and I'm not. But from the outside looking in, some stuff, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like this and that. But like, it's almost like back in the day, like a, with some karate styles, they go, you step here, boom, that's a broken leg. You go here, boom, that's a groin shot, you're down. You that could be hot, that could be possible. But if you're never applying it and you're just doing the technique without the timing, you don't really know if you're gonna be breaking that arm leg. Do you guys do any sparring that's like with masks on or anything where you're poking the eyes or I don't know? <laughs> if it if it's the real deal, if it's the way I you know I did it in Guatemala, it was sometimes too real, like it was like uh there was no, you know, like a friend of mine got shot in class by accident because it, the rules weren't there, you know, to support things. But so I, I would say to anyone that practices Krav Maga, you got to get in a cage and do some Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, wrestling. And then in those moments, you can think of where the rules would bend and what you can do that's different. You know what I mean? And and also that there's obviously a fight in the street is 30 seconds max and obviously a fight in the UFC is 20 25 minutes or whatever so there is a, a way of explosiveness and Krav Maga that is full on like all in because it's life or death and it's 30 seconds and you're in and you're out but I would say like you said Matt like you have to do sparring and even without the the the, the thing like I did a lot of sparring with gear because there's sticks and there's knives and there's things but you still have to be able to do actual sparring with a mouse guard you know and i think that's my opinion well benjamin Hall, you, you can't just breeze by my friend accidentally got shot in class uh can you tell us what <laughs> that's a that's a tough thing just to kind of go through quickly man. how did your friend get shot in class <laughs> accidentally man i was in a this was a stoop it was when i was 14 i had lost my father i was trying to become a man the way i knew how i was like maybe i'll learn how to fight and like protect myself and stuff so i went to this very it, he wasn't a guy that trained me all my life this was just like a nine month period at 14 years old i went to this class where they were teaching us how to fight with knives and the guy believed that you had to learn with the real shit so that you could like feel the adrenaline so we would go slower but it was real knives and real things and real guns but obviously no bullets but but they wouldn't really have a protocol of checking the weapon they were just like People would come in with their weapons and they'd be like, okay, time for class. They take out the magazine, do one of these, and then just like, boom, right on the forehead. So you had to kind of trust that they actually took the fucking bullets wow. out. And I was 14. My mom thought I was in karate class or something. And I, I would get these like the cold steel on my forehead. And I actually learned how to do the technique well because of the fear. And one day the instructor forgot, oh, he, we left the class. We finished the class. He put the magazine in and a guy had a question and I didn't know how to answer it. So we called the teacher. He came back with his boots on and stuff. And he was like, yeah, for example, if I do this and I saw that instead of checking, he kind of just racked and shot. And in that moment, I thought that's loaded. So I grabbed this dude who was not my friend at the moment. Now we're blood brothers. You yeah. know what I mean? But uh, we, I, we fell down be back. And I remember I stood up and there was a loud ringing in my ear and I looked around and I was like, I got shot. So I started checking my body and I'm 14 man, and I'm checking my body. I'm like, this is it. I'm done. I'm done. And then I looked down and the Yoshin, he was holding his stomach like this and he pulled his shirt up and he had a, a hole in his body, two holes. It had went gone through in his stomach and he was telling it burns, it burns. And I was like, what? And I, I didn't know what to do. Everyone froze. The instructor actually literally grabbed his face and said, this is what you're going to tell the police and started making up a story of of like what happened, like basically threatening him like to, to leave him there. And I was like, you guys are crazy. Call 911. So I carried the guy downstairs and I put him in an ambulance. And the instructor still told me like, Benjamin, go get the bullet or go find the case or whatever. And I went and I found the case and he was like, did you find it? And I lied out of instinct. I was like, no, I didn't. 
and I had it and I got home and I was like shaking and my mom was like were you okay I was like I'm just cold I'm just cold and I went to shower and I remember washing off all the trauma and then I called the guy who was in the hospital and and I had his number and he was like I really wish I had the bullet and I was like I have it man I have it here um and he he survived but he didn't hit any organ but he hit an artery or something it was crazy so that that instructor what a what an ass to worry about himself what did you never go back to that class and whatever happened with that guy man never went back to him he called me a few days after and he said i owe you big time and i didn't want anything to do with him and and i think then he got involved in politics and stuff and uh yeah i don't think he ever made i don't i don't really know you know oh. but uh, I'm that assuming my- the next conversation with your mother was, Benjamin, what do you think of Taekwondo? <laughs> she went, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's you as far away. Would have been a lot easier. My father was on the NYPD, and his his friend is Lieutenant uh, Derek, big black guy, strong guy. Yeah. We meet in uh, Hollis, Queens, in the basement of my uh, my grandparents' house. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We meet, and uh, I was like 16 at the time, and we were doing gun disarms with real revolvers. And right, like, right. First, they would look, open it up, check, shoot it at the floor, do it again. Look, they were being overly protected. Right, there's a protocol. They wanted to use the real gun. So I remember we'd get it, and like when you say you get hurt in class, uh, we would get it, and he would do it on me too, the guy Derek, like this. And I listened. Yeah. Somebody pulls a gun on me, I'm giving him my fucking money clip. I'm not fucking around. But yeah. one of those things where... It was cool. It was like they'd be here, and he was fast, and I was trying to too. Where you'd move it and turn the nozzle back, and it felt like your finger was gonna break off. So it was. Yeah. I remember doing that to this day. You know. But yeah. I just stuck out of my head. No, so, no, it's the real deal. Like that. So it's really good. Karma guy's really good for that. Yeah. When, when you were a kid growing up, you said a lot of the guys would bring their own weapons. Was it a rough area you grew up in? Was there a lot of uh, a lot of fighting and a lot of danger when you when you grew up? Yeah, there was. I, you know, I, I grew up in a very specific thing because I had no money, but I went to a school with people with a lot of money, right? But a lot of those people that eventually I got in with, they were like, they they were, you know, sons of, you know, drug lords. And it was, and a lot of people trying to prove themselves. So it was a, a mixed crowd of people with money trying to get involved in gangs and people that had no money that were rough. And there was just a lot of, of that in my childhood. So so I, that's why I always wanted to learn. And I had no father. So I was like, maybe if I learn how to fight, like, and then, look, eventually it all t- paid off because now I'm an actor on Chicago PD. I, yep. I know how to handle weapons. I know how to fight. You know, I do Muay Thai uh, here in LA and I do, I've done in Cobrinha, I do some jujitsu, you know. So a little, I mean, very light, not, not. Cobrinha? You say yeah, Cobrinha? Just, oh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? You know, I we just went to a meditation retreat, right? Um, for 10 days in Tennessee. And guess who I met? Who? I met your friend Glover Tishera. Oh, I love. We love Glover. He was like, oh, I love Matt Sarah. And he was like, tell him, ask him who had the best fight of 2022. <laughs> the former champ. Hey, listen, that guy is just a, a champion in life. He is such a sweet yeah. auto. You He's know? A sweet guy. He's but such what- a sweet friend. I know. Listen, I know we. You got to get out of here soon. What? Re, what is the retreat? What is that about? What do you do? Oh, it's a bro. It's a meditation retreat uh, with Sad Guru. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Uh, mm-hmm. He's a like a, a guru from India that's uh, you know impacting like three point five billion people now, and and uh, it's teaching you so many things that we don't know about our body because we just all, all focused on being outside instead of inside. And the breath work, you know, like there was a lot of good people there, like the athletes, big, big athletes in that, in that thing. Just, and I think um, it just teaches, like, since I've done that meditation, that took me like 30 hours of practice to learn a 21 minute meditation, do it twice a day. Uh, my sleep quota has reduced to four hours a day. And it's not like I'm trying to wake up. I just don't need to sleep anymore. I sleep four hours a day. I eat less and I have the, more energy. Um, it's insane. It's How insane. Do you let, are you, sorry, Matt, are you good at letting your thought, I can't let my thoughts go when I meditate. I just, I don't know how to get rid of it. You could have just like, let it go. But you know, that's a good, I thought the same thing. Your mind can never become meditative. Your mind will always have thoughts. It is you who becomes meditative because you're not the mind or the body. You're something in between, right? So, so it's, it's about seeing the thoughts just come and go as clouds in the sky. 
and knowing that you're detached from them. So the thoughts will always go. Now, now this guy helping people with this thing. Is there psychedelics involved or am I traveling this place just to tell somebody to listen to a fucking waterfall? Man, I swear to God, there's no psychedelics. And when I got there, uh, I did a very tough course and I was like, what do I, and they don't tell you anything about what you're going to do. And finally someone said, okay, imagine this picture that it's like you did ayahuasca without ayahuasca. And I was like, that's simple. Like, that's not possible, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that the same Benjamin as a runner's high? <laughs> if Chi and Chong had a kid, listen to me. Wait, what, wait, what is it called again? Before I forget, Benjamin, what's, what's the meditation called? Uh, oh, this, this meditation is called uh, Shambhavi Mahamudra Kriya. But if you guys follow Sadhguru on Instagram, he, he's, he's, he's the real deal. Like okay. this dude is the real deal. Um, Gr Guru said? Sad Guru, S A D H G U R U. I'm looking for the happy guru. I don't want that shit. Oh. I, no. <laughs> I'll be happy. I'll give me some psychedelics. You'll be happy. Now I'm fucking around. But listen, you know, even those guys with the retreats with the psychedelics, like, you got to do it. It opened my mind. Well, the first 24 hours, you're shitting and throwing up in a bucket. But I go, okay, well, you, yeah. you're looking at the bucket thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no shitting in this one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got with the sad guru. Yeah, how yeah. long do you how long do you meditate for every day? Uh, man, now I get to I, I'm able to now be in like meditating for an hour sometimes. Wow, like, I like bro, it. I could never do it. You, you, you want to feel like a beast? Sit down for an hour in silence, and you like that's that's the truth, bro. That is the truth. When you can when you can shut down for an hour in silence. Silence is what we're all scared of. That's why we're all talking and connecting and finding things to do and getting busy. When you can silence it. That's G. That's what I think. So that's the, the path I'm trying to do. And it become, makes me a better actor because I'm more present now. Like everything affects me more and more attentive to things, you know? What, uh, when does uh, Chicago uh, PD air and how can people see I know they can see it on NBC. They can see it on Peacock. But uh, how, how long has it been on and, and how can people see it? Well, yeah, it's, uh, you can see it on, on NBC. Uh, uh, it's on Wednesdays at 9 or 10, but it, then it's on Peacock. Okay. Uh, the whole season is now out. The finale was last week, I think. Nice, man. So are you guys coming back next year or are you still waiting to find out? No, yeah, we're coming back. We're oh, coming that's back. great. That's yeah. the worst is in between. Uh, I've never been on anything that got a season two. So I, I always know what it's like to have a, what you think is a good season one and then just be sent your walking paper. How many years has this been on? It's been on for 10 seasons, but this is my first season. Your first I'm, season, I'm right. Okay, yeah. Though. This is going to be my first time doing a second season of a show. My last two shows were just one season as well. Oh. How does that feel? That has to feel good, no? You get the call, you're like, oh, we're coming back. I know, it's beautiful. Because, like, you know, acting is such a unpredictable thing, you know? And, like, being able to be in a on a network show where it's it's dick wolf you know what i mean this yeah. dude's a beast and he can he can make it happen so so that's beautiful and i get to to work on my craft more and i play a cool cop he's from he went from juvie to like to becoming a cop he plays this gray area and i can really like find stuff because I, I like to get in in my characters yeah people yeah, they, and like that. they like the people that you root for that they got that they they ride that fine line of is he a good guy he's a little rough around the edges yeah, that's him. He breaks some rules, you know. He he he's he's tough. He's a tough kid. And coming from where you come from, and your experience in the martial arts, and having grown up with that, it probably does give you some authenticity, just very naturally, because the, these things are not things you're just pretending. They're things that you've actually experienced, and yeah. it's behaviors you've actually seen. Even though you've never been a cop, you've seen these type of interactions, and a lot of actors probably have not had that experience. 100%. I was lucky to grow up in, in Guatemala and like I, you know, it, it, not, nothing what came easy to me, you know, and uh, and uh, I, I think I wasn't realizing I was I was becoming an actor as growing while well, growing up without knowing I was going to be an actor. Because when you're a kid from from a rough neighborhood or like a broken home, you need to learn these things that other kids maybe don't learn. Right. Like just right. to to cope with feelings or to to navigate between uh, marital violence or you know what I mean or like all these shit that you you go through you have to learn how to be smart you know and uh, I think a lot of kids with trauma have that 
It probably learned to teach you to compartmentalize well, too, because if you're afraid a lot, if there's things in the neighborhood that are scary and then you have to go and do something else, you can't constantly be consumed by fear. So you probably learn in acting how to put that fear aside and just kind of do what you have to do. 100% Jim and, and I'll, or use it. Right. Like, like, right. cause I grew up where like art, you don't do art. If you're a guy in Guatemala, <laughs> you, you do boxing or soccer, that's it. Uh, and I come here to LA and everyone's doing their feelings, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> what is this? But when I, when I, when I got into it and I was like, wow, like this is an outlet, bro. Like I can, I can say what I feel and I can feel that anger that I used to feel and I can feel it well. And I can, you know, put my heart on the table. Then you're like, wow, this is therapy. You know, so you channel it, you can channel it, man. You have all that pain, all that baggage, and you just put it there. And and then people like it because people are afraid to feel it. So my job is to put it on in front of you so that you recognize it. Well, there's a difference, too, because people can sense when somebody is pretending something or in your case, when you're just kind of opening a door and letting something come out that's already there. Uh, and, yeah. and I think that that plays very well. And I think people can feel that it's genuine. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Jim. I agree with you 100%. There's a difference when it's just real. Well, look, man, we have, we have Kai Kara Francis coming in in just a minute. Thank you for coming on. Really interesting to talk to you. No, um, you. That, that story was so great, too. You ne never brush over. My friend got shot in class. <laughs> That's a great story. And um, everyone should check out Chicago PD. Go to Peacock. You can see the whole season. And look forward to seeing you next season, man. And uh, I'm happy it's working out for you. It was really, really fascinating to, you, to talk to you. Appreciate it. God bless you guys. Bye. You too, pal. We'll talk to you again, okay? All right, bye. All right, be good, buddy. What a great, what a great guy and an interesting story. Um, nice energy. Yeah, oh, very nice energy. I like nice, nice guy, nice guy. Very nice dude. I like him. And uh, he's got that look of a, a kid that's going to be in the movies for a while. I can see him in like a Fast and Furious. He looks like he's ready for a franchise somewhere. He's got a he's a good looking kid. He's got he's got something about him. I like it. But he has such a nice energy. He's the type of guy that people probably misread sometimes too. Like you know, you see that guy, nice looking, nice guy, and don't realize that like if you fuck with him, he's probably gonna he's gonna he's gonna cause a great amount of physical distress for you. Oh, who a guy like who me? You're talking about me? Well, no, everybody knows you're gonna cause physical distress. As and well I, as emotional distress, by the way. Um, people can sense that when they meet you. <laughs> I'm saying he seems like a non, he seems like just a nice guy. Jimmy. Yes, sir. I care of friends. As long as he's not fighting a guy named Brandon, I think he might. I, be dude, I was just thinking, it, what, what, like since 2016 or 17 is the last time he lost to anybody who wasn't named Brandon. Uh, yeah, he's fighting uh, Amir Albazi. Who's I think undefeated in the octagon, and he was he sixteen and one? Yes, he is sixteen and one. That's the main event this Saturday night. An unbelievable fight. That's but Matt, have you seen? I had to ask you. I thought of you a lot watching the Ultimate Fighter because it's veterans against the new guys, uh, Chandler against McGregor, and it's oddly enough, Chandler has all the vets, and uh, and uh, McGregor has all of the of the young blood, as they're calling them. And, and have you seen it, the the first episode? And what did you think? I enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. Sometimes I watch that show and it like brings me back, you know, when it's a, all of a sudden it says fight day and this and that. Like, you know, I live that thing. So I know what it's like not to know who you're fighting. And then, well, in this one, they actually know who you're fighting the first one. But, you know, they do that, the matchup. But uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was very, very short work by uh, Roosevelt. Roosevelt Roberts, yeah. And very accurate. And you kind of felt for, for Nate. Nate Jennerman, man, like, yeah. uh, you know, you could see a guy would, I, when I was watching Nate talk to his family at home, uh, not, you know, looking at pictures, I should say. Uh, and then they showed him with his family, like prior to going on the show. I'm like, I am so happy. I wasn't, I was engaged with my, 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 now my wife sure. uh, engaged with her uh, during the, the shooting. And I was on a mission. Like I knew, you know, I missed her some, but it wasn't, you know, my mind's on the fucking goal. You know what I mean? My right. mind's on the prize. You didn't have kids at home. No, that's the point. If I would have had kids and how you are after you have kids, you're just more emotional. So when I saw that guy tearing up and stuff, I'm like, oh, boy. Yeah. I, I didn't have to deal with that. I, that I felt for him, too, because you, you know that he's better than that. You know he's a better fighter than getting knocked out in eight seconds. I mean, all the pressure on him. It's the first fight. Connors is coach. This is a big season. 
it's I felt very bad for a guy not losing a fight but getting knocked out that way because it can happen to anybody who gets caught and uh I, I give a huge advantage to these veterans man these are guys who have experienced the pressure I think even though these other guys have fought the uh the the younger guys have had a, a lot of fights but I think these guys coming back into the UFC have experienced a certain amount of pressure that these younger fighters maybe haven't walked through yet so I think they have a huge advantage uh in these fights I think I think those veterans are gonna I mean listen I always go for the kind of the old school I guess and sure time, I think they're gonna have like I think they're gonna give hell to these these younger guys I think Connor will be a good coach too like you know there's there's times where he can be he can be really obnoxious but I think as a coach you kind of get the best qualities in him as a fighter he's probably a a, a good coach and Chandler is just uh a, a great guy and uh you know, I'm really, really looking forward to this season. And in episode one, I haven't been this excited about uh, the Ultimate Fighter in a long time. And this was such a great opening uh, episode. Yeah, proper twelve. Oh, uh, you know, he's never heard my impersonation before. It was pretty good. I actually thought it was him for a second. Did you? Did you close? Close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes. All right. Me. Can I close my ears? <laughs> okay. oh, I, I thought you the whole episode, though, Matt. I just thought of you as what the the veteran, what this. Again, these guys are not getting a championship shot, but getting a shot back in. And it's hard not to root for guys who, uh, who you know are fighting to get back in. But then again, you want to see young guys get their first shot too. They're guys who have never had that taste. So it's kind of hard to, to root against them. But yeah, I, I felt very bad for Nate. Um, you know, I, I just... It sucks when you don't get to show what you, what you, what you know. Yeah. You, you, anything <laughs> you know what i mean he really didn't show anything and we know he, he's you see more on the you know lead up to the fight with his po you know his, his fights prior yeah so we knew we, we know the guy could fight so listen man he's gonna feel like that until his uh he gets back in there listen by the way oh sorry Matt. what were you gonna say i was gonna say uh what are you saying uh you, oh you, no well, listen, you 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 know you don't know what you're gonna say I'm this gonna say. card. No, I do. I was gonna say this card. Uh, you know, uh, Abazi against Kai Kara France, <clears throat> and the main is Alex Caceres uh, against Daniel Pineda. A great fight, and Jim Miller and Jared Gordon um, is is the third fight up on that card. Nice to see Jared Gordon back in there. Um, really looking forward to that after that Bobby uh, no contest with Bobby Green. Yes. Now how did? Now you heard about the Tim Elliott thing, right? Uh, no, I did not. All right. <laughs> Google it. I don't know. Wait, they did, I don't know. Listen, basically, I will. They, he found out his, his wife, who's been on the show before, the girl Gina, uh, they divorced, I think they're getting divorced because she was with his best friend, uh, former uh, former teammate, this guy Kevin something or other. I don't want to – I won't throw everybody's names out there. But this guy – so – and on the, then he, you know, on the wedding night and this and that, it's really awful. Oh, you know, during that. the entire marriage, she was. Oh, okay, he's gotta, yeah. He's oh. got to bring that with him in the cage and use that as fuel. That's when did this all happen, Matt? It happened pretty recent. Oh, okay. So you know, that's a rough one. But let's that get back. Sucks. To yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that's a problem. But I'm looking at this fight, at these fights, and I'm like, yo. I didn't, how did they slip in a fight where Jim Miller is fighting Jared Gordon? I didn't even know that was going down. That's I know. I, when was that fight announced? Was that uh, has that been uh, anou announced a while ago, or is that a newer fight? I don't know, man. Yeah. All I know is it's this weekend, you know. But um, you know, listen, I have a good time, man. Locally, you know, my kids, they and you know, they always uh, messed around with jujitsu, but they, you know, like with me. But they just started going down within the last year, you know what I mean? Like, like religiously. So I'm throwing them in like a first tournament like this weekend. So during the day, that's what I'll be doing this weekend. My wow. three daughters, my wife, they're doing a jiu-jitsu tournament. And, uh, you know, listen, you got to test the waters, man. I mean, competing is not for everyone. But, you know, my oldest two always did dance and they used to competing and going on the stage and doing that. And they they, they have enough they, – they're enjoying. They're enjoying – their, their battles at Sarah BJJ with the other kids. So look, man, there's a local tournament. Let's go in there and let's, let's see how we like it, you know? So, you know, I started them off with arm lock and some teddy bears. So let's get them in there and uh, I'm going to have some fun with that. So that's my Saturday, Jimmy. 
Okay. Yeah. I, as we're talking, Matt, I'm kind of looking at the allegations. Uh, and that's very, uh, very tough for Tim Elliott. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, that's just, um, you know, obviously you're, very you're, painful you're, to learn. Yeah. Yeah. That's a rough one. That right. sucks. We've all been through it though. I mean, most of us have maybe not in a marriage, but in life I've done it and I've had it done to me and it's just, it's awful. All right, Jimmy, did you hear anything I told you about what I, what I'm doing this weekend? Yes, I did. But I was just, as we were talking, I was kind well, of looking. What did I tell you? I'm going to be that guy. But, hold on a second. Hello? Yeah. All right. I told you. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're looking up the most foulest. I apologize. <laughs> a, a story that went the other way. I'm telling you a story that went the, a, a nice way. A positive way. No, I know. But I wanted to be up to speed on what you were saying because I know Tim is fighting on Saturday. Uh, also on Saturday. My wife and my three daughters are jumping in a local yeah. jiu-jitsu tournament. That's oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. You would like to hear that. So what I was telling you, and you were like, yeah, you know, that's great. This Tim thing. <laughs> that's oh. sorry. I, to do I just talking about my kids now. Can we? Anyway. I apologize. Um, that's great. Now, are, are you, as the dad, how nervous? I know you know that, like, you've been training them, but how nervous is it to watch them compete? No, you know what? I'm going to be watch way more... It's more of like, look, man, sometimes with these tournaments, most people are cool, but like right. sometimes you just get like fucking moronic, like insecure coaches who are like, when they're coaching a kid's match, and I've seen this before, the kids are going for it, like, oh, Yo, you get it, break it, break it, really break it, you fucking imbecile. Like you hear things like that, and for a guy like myself gets like, yeah, you, hey, dude, you, dude, what's the matter? You never had a, a situation, you never... Did you used to get smacked? You never smacked somebody. What is what is your situation that you're yelling for another kid to break another? Kid? Like I don't know. Maybe because I'm like secure myself, I don't do that. Right. But most of the times, people are civil and they're cool and this and that. But you know those oh, those. Listen, I've been in this business for fucking thirty years, so I've seen very good coaches, nice coaches, cool coaches, everybody. And you also see insecure people. Sure. Probably live through either their children or this or that. So you know. I'm looking forward to a nice day of them testing themselves. That's what it's about. So it must be nice for you, Matt, to see your wife and your kids all involved with the thing you teach. Like they're all loving this thing. Like, you know, people try to get family into the family business and here's this thing that they're actually enjoying doing that you're giving them. It's got to feel great. I was talking to one of New York's finest. This guy's been on the map for 30 years. I was asking him about his daughters, my buddy, Joe Benetti. And uh, Jedi Joe, and uh, I was with him the other day, and he, he was at the school. You know, he's been he was at my wedding, fucking sixteen years ago, and uh, so I see him at the school. I haven't seen him in a while, you know. And uh, I'm asking about his kids now; they're in college. He goes and he sees me. I'm on the mat with my wife and my daughters. He goes, "This is beautiful." I tried to get they just didn't like it, Matt. They didn't fucking like it. He goes, "This is beautiful. This is the, you know, it, it is." It, no, listen. Uh, my wife even says, "Like I don't crowd you with this. I love when they're all at the school." Right. It's Friday nights. We're there, and after we eat, all right, let's order some DoorDash. We we're in my lounge. We're eating afterwards, and fucking, it's nice, man. It's a nice thing. Everybody's in the family business, and I see, like, listen, win, lose. I've won on jujitsu tournaments. I've won on different levels. I've lost as, as a black belt my first time. So you know, you get to learn a lot about yourself in these kind of competitions. And I was more listen when I go to watch my daughters dance. There's times, now there's times they did great and they got special awards. There's other times over the course of, you know, now my oldest is 14 and my other one is, my middle is 12. Mm. It, there's more than, I'm going to say maybe one time a piece where they forget a number or something, they have to walk off stage and dude, that's the worst thing ever. You know what I mean? That's worse than watching them get on locked as long as they're not hurt. You know what I mean? When they forget a number on stage or something and they run off stage, you have Jimmy, you just want to be like, fucking yeah. You just want to get the hell out of there and you feel their pain. That's the most embarrassing thing. But I've seen, like, I've seen my, my, them, uh, my, my, for instance, the last time that happened with my middle one, I don't want to bore everybody with this, but okay. she would, you would, she went off stage and then she had to go back 10 minutes later, do the same number and fucking killed it. So that yeah. shows not a person, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I think, I think those things are good in life. Because especially if you come back out and do it, because they kind of show you that the embarrassment isn't going to kill you. You come back and you do something, and oh, okay, yeah, this is survivable. This, this, because social embarrassment is what scares everybody. I think even more than 
physical uh, altercations is the social humiliation. So when you have an embarrassing moment and then you come back and you actually do it, I think that's a really good thing. When I say about like people with, if, if, and let me know, producer, let me know if uh, our guest gets here. Yeah, yeah, he's not here yet. You know, I had a, 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 a one of my black belts who I had to, I had to let go. Uh, and I'm loyal to a fault. I'll keep a guy on too long. Sure. Work. The guy came from a karate background. And now I have a big school. You see my school on Instagram. The guys are running around to warm up, you know? Yep. The guy comes a little bit late. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not hard on him. I don't give a sure. fuck. Traffic. I'm happy you're there. You know, yep. I, I, it's my place. So I'm not there. You no, know, listen, I had this back when I had two schools. So I can't be there all the time. Anytime a guy would get a second late, this guy that was running the, the class, everybody's jogging. He would embarrass them in front of Oh, I guess Jimmy can get here on time, but I guess Robbie guess he could take his time and we're all out here. I mean, dude, I would lose. I remember at one point between that and embarrassing guys in class, uh, I would I lost up to like, I remember it was like six weeks. I lost six guys. And, and nobody knew, it, nobody was, they weren't in cahoots. It was because of somebody making, it's like, it's like a, to make someone feel that make themselves feel better, they'll single out somebody to feel a little. You know sure, I mean? sure, of course. Oh, so, you know, for the greater good, I had to let the guy go after a while. And uh, did you warn him first and go, "Look, you got to stop with this"? Oh yeah, oh, I, I gave him a suspension at one point. At one point, one of my older guys came up to me. Now he's a black belt. This guy John, and he goes, "Man, you know, I just he was hard. He was some people when they think somebody's close to you, they're almost afraid to speak up. Yeah, they're, they're like, oh, what, well, what if I say something? Then I'm going to be out of this school, and I like mad and this and that. Yeah. I mean, so I remember one of my guys brought me a sign. He goes, Matt, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm you know, I'm an, I'm an adult and I'm a, I go, dude, what are you even talking about? I don't know what the, yeah. he goes, listen, man, I was, I didn't know I was warming up and I was working with this guy. He was a new guy and I didn't know. And the other guy called me out. He embarrassed me in front of everybody. And I listen, man, I know he's a higher rank, but you know, I want, I want smack. I, I'm a guy. No, you're not going to talk to me like that. You know, and I go, right. hey, dude. I go, hey, listen, I'm right there with you, dude. I, so it got to the point where I'm like this. I'm, I got this place to empower people. So if they ever get fucked with, they can deal with it. I don't have this place for people to get fucked with. So I got yeah. annoyed. I, I go, look, man, I suspended him with pay because I'm a fucking, I just You're a nice him. guy. Yeah. That's not I, a big punishment. <laughs> for two weeks, I'll pay you. But he's like, no, but to him, it was hurtful because he loved being there. So then eventually I go, look, man, you got to go. This is not going to work. I, I can't, I, for, the, for the greater good of me helping people, you're, you're that, my white belt class, my, it's out of control now. We got guys coming in like fucking crazy because, you know, some guys, if, when they're teaching, whatever, they'll, they'll make it like, all right, this guy's not my type of guy. I'm going to thin the herd out a little bit. They'll make it where it's uncomfortable. Now that guy's not training. It's no skin off their back. But like me, it's like, hey, dude, I want to grow this fucking thing. And I want of people. Of course. You're making it a personality who, who meshes well with you. Get the fuck out of here. So. I kept him alone. Uh, that guy, you know. Oh, he's in the waiting. Room. Kai Kara France is in the waiting room. Uh, he's on. I, I, I imagine he's in uh, in Vegas. Uh, let's bring him in. There he is. How you doing, man? Let's find hey, out. Guys. How you how, guys? Good. How are you? How are you? We see the meat guy sticking his head in in the back. I'm only kidding. We see the guy on the, on the bed. <laughs> it's my wrestling coach. Just make sure he doesn't pick his up. <laughs> you don't want to make the guy back. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's better. been a while since you fought. Uh, July of last year. Was was there an injury, or is there was something you you wanted to take time off, or what? Um, or or, or would just things just fall through for you? Yeah, it was a bit of everything. Uh, it was definitely an injury that kept me away. Uh, I had a back injury, so something I had to prioritize investing back into my body just being a lot more um mindful of like recovery mobility stretching all of these things that are i guess was a humbling thing to i neglected until it humbled me until it set me down and i couldn't do anything so finally out of that and it's been a great camp no injuries and and um perfect timing but uh yeah been busy outside of the the cage coaching a rugby team being a wrestling coach filming a doco in new zealand um that was on a mainstream platform so humanizing what we do in the ufc and people could follow my journey and awesome thing about it is i'm still in my journey this is just another chapter so this new audience is on board now and they're following me for saturday night 
Was the um? Oh, sorry, Matt. Was the injury? Uh, did you have that during the Moreno fight? Was it, did it affect you at all, or did it happen after? No, it was just something that came up after okay. the fight, and and that yeah, it was it was just over time got worse, and then just muscle tightness. Um, that was the main thing. So one of these things we you, you do too much regards, and then you had to start again, kind of thing. So yeah, gave me a nice time to reflect and uh, go from there. Okay. Now with this fight coming up with Amir uh, Abazi. Did they say, look, we got good news and bad news? The, you know, the bad news is this guy's undefeated. The good news is his name's not Brandon. <laughs> no, I'm fucking right. Look, <laughs> times, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, hey, okay. listen, man, it's a weird thing. You're fucking killing everybody just named Brandon. But look, at least it's the fucking studs that we had a hard time with. You know what I mean? I mean, both Brandon Roy Val and Brandon Marino, obviously. I mean, you know. I know what I love about the city kickboxing guys. They're not they're not shying away from the fucking tough fights. Whether it's Israel Adesanya or man here Kai. I mean, they did when you when you get offered Amir, who's undefeated now and only has one loss in his whole MMA career, undefeated in the UFC. And you do you look at that like that's a great name for me to bounce right the hell back in? Yeah, I, I didn't really look at it uh, too deeply. I just saw the guy that came in and. That's the next guy. Um, like I've never been one to shy away from a challenge and I'm not here to pick fights. When I signed up to the UFC, I know I'm fighting the best guys in the world. So that's what I want to be doing. Uh, if I'm not here, you know, competing and, and, you know, working my way towards being a flow world champion, then um, I, I'm in the wrong organization. So I welcome it. I fought these guys that are undefeated. You know, I fought these guys that are uh, specialists. I fought these guys that have momentum. And I love it. I love I love the challenge because when I go in there and I uh, get it done, I take all that hype and I get my uh, title run back on track. How what's the, what's the uh, documentary about and uh, what platform is it on? Uh, so it's just um, just in New Zealand. It's on a platform called TVNZ. Uh, they had a big kind of budget, so they got to follow me to Dallas for my last fight and to do fight week and kind of let people um, insight into the what goes on. How do you get to, you know, to fight for a world title? People don't really see that. So I got to kind of shed light on New Zealand combat sports. Um, you know, it's been awesome having my wife talk, my mom and dad, Eugene, our coach, um, Izzy, Dan. So it got, it was cool to kind of bring everyone into sure. it and, and um, spread, just shed more light onto what we do because how I balance, you know, being a father, husband, you know, how I, you know, try to, uh, navigate through all of that pressure, stress, and then life after fighting. So they'll follow me. How do I pick myself back up? What do I do to um, get back in the ring? Um, and uh, yeah, so many things that play a massive part to this career. But like I said before, people got to see what I've come from, what I've what I had to go through. But now I've got another fight in front of me, so they get to see what I what I uh, what true character uh, I have. Are they still shooting? Oh, so I apologize, Matt. Are they, are they still shooting it or is it done or is it a series? No, no, no it was a series, six-part series. So once they finish in New Zealand, the rights, then it will hopefully uh, get picked up on a bigger platform overseas and then that's when uh, overseas fans can, can tune in and watch. But um, just, it's, they're not filming now. It's just uh, well, who knows if they get another budget, we, we could do a, a second season. Now, after being bullied for your small stature in high school, that's how you started training. That's what I'm reading here. For you, you started training MMA because people yeah, remember. yeah, you it was just to get just to get that. confidence. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, do you remember the first time somebody tried to mess with you after you had some adequate training, time training? That's the thing. I never had to use it, which was. Uh, which was funny because it was like, it was always for my like personal reasons to, to get into martial arts, but yeah. I never really got into a street fight. I never really got into like uh, physical altercations outside the gym. And um, I always knew that with great power become, becomes great responsibility. So oh, I always yeah. wanted to. Uh, he said it! He <laughs> said it! <laughs> Uncle That's Ben, motherfucker! Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I, I, in my head, I screamed that. I'm sorry about that. Go yeah, ahead. <laughs> sorry. But yeah, that's that's how I've always seen martial arts, and I just respected it so much that uh, I wanted to keep it in the gym. I, I knew where I wanted to be, and 
you know, I don't get bullied now. You know, I, I try to um, be an ad big advocate. I go to high schools now and I talk about it and try to um, inspire the, the, the next generation of, of especially young men to do better and um, try to use my, I guess, um, journey as an example of, you know, how you can change your failures into success. And what do you expect out of Albazi uh, uh, this uh, this Saturday? He's lost one fight. It's been about four years since he's lost. Uh, uh, what, what do you think he is going to uh, bring? What do you think he expects from you? So, yeah, this uh, is a contender that wants to take my spot. I'm number three. Uh, you know, he's coming in with a four-fight win streak. You know, he's a great, great uh, well-rounded fighter. Um, but like I said before, I fought these guys before. I fought guys that had never lost. I fought guys that are on massive win streaks. Um, it all changes when I land that first right hand. And that's what I'll, I'd love to see. <laughs> I'd love to see um, that realization. You know, Cody Cody saw it. Um, Bonteran saw it. But uh, it's just one of these things that um, this is uh, new to him being a main event. This will be my second time fighting for a five round of fight. Uh, being a headliner, uh, more pressure, more obligations. Uh, me traveling 15 hours to get to Vegas to, to fight, uh, losing my suitcase a few, uh, a few days ago, and it's only just arrived today. So, little things like that, you can't, um, you have to adapt, you have to just go with it. It's not, not something that um, you can uh, have the perfect lead up. Um, so, that's what I bring into this. I bring in that experience. Is it hard for you to travel? Without family, or do you bring family with you? I think you have a, you have a baby's on the way, right? You have a, a one child and a, and a baby's on the way. Yeah, I got another one on the way. So, for me, this this camp, um, well, for this fight week, it's just business. So no families here, just my coaches, uh, just the usual setup, um, and that's all I need. Um, you know, I can, family times for after, and right now it's it's uh, everything towards uh, getting getting this win and and putting uh, my title title run back on track. How much time do you give yourself to get to Vegas? I know that is such a long haul flight. When do you get to Vegas and how long to adjust to the time? Usually about a week. So I got in on Sunday night. So, um, you know, my, I'm sleeping back to normal now. And, wow. and um, it's just my usual routine with, uh, with all my uh, fights that I've had so far in Vegas. So, um, yeah, it's, it's the usual setup for us. Uh, nothing's out of the usual run in the morning, train at night, same time with fighting. So, yeah, smooth sailing. Yeah, that's smart. Guys that train at night, it, it just seems to make more sense because that's when you have to. Uh, but a lot of guys like to train early in the morning, and I guess whatever your personal preference is, do you just find that training at night just kind of keeps you more in sync with when you're fighting? Yeah, for sure. You just want to be getting your body clock adjusted and sweating around the same time. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things you give or take. If you're fighting at midnight, do you – want to fight around the same t or train around the same time you're fighting or do you want to maximize your sleep and get a bit of night's rest so there's a bit of balance there um and i feel like we've found that in uh in our system well look this is uh, an incredible main event coming up what do you think you need to do uh, uh number three now uh you know everyone has a couple of setbacks but overall you looked uh, tremendous in the last couple of years so what do you think you need to do to get a shot at the title and i know you're not looking past albazi but i'm just saying in general what do you think you need to do um yeah for this fight camp it's been about 12 weeks that we've uh, had to prepare for amir and and uh it was about a month ago where they gave us the headline slot so the great thing about our gym our system that we have in place is already already getting ready uh for five round fights so we didn't have to adjust too much the volume was already so high so i was already fit enough to go five rounds when i got the call so it's a great place to be when um there's no that no added pressure or stress to have to build a gas tank when it's already there so for this fight you know uh, i'm not expecting it to go five rounds um i'm expecting pressure i'm expecting a mayor to bring the fight to me um, you know, this is, he hasn't fought the caliber of fighters I fought. He hasn't fought someone like me. And um, I, I, I'm ready for the challenge. I'm ready for everything that he brings. And um, I feel like I remind everyone while I'm one of the best in the world, you know, that Moreno fight showed that I'm right there with the best guys. And it's been a bit of time away, but um, I get to, I guess, re-establish myself in this division. And great for the flyweights to be a main slot. It's been a while since we've had that. So, 
the UFC have trusted me to deliver and that's what I plan on doing. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Kai. Uh, good luck on Saturday and we'll talk to you again afterwards. Uh, have a great fight and uh, look forward to seeing this. All right. It's going to be a great fight and congrats on the main event. Appreciate it, boys. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Kai France. Thank you, buddy. Bye. Awesome. Um, great fight this Saturday. And um, I really enjoyed talking to uh, Benjamin uh, Levy Aguilar as well. He was a very interesting guy. I think so. I liked, I liked him. I liked him a lot. I did too. You know what I'm saying? I think Kai Kara France looks ready. And he I does. think he wants to make sure that a me here won't like it. Rock the... Jimmy. Yes, I'll, sir. Well, you just click off the screen. No, no. I wanted to promote the fights. The prelims start this Saturday. ESPN plus 6 p.m. Eastern time, which is all that matters, New York time. Nine o'clock is the main card. So don't get confused and think that it's a, a 10 p.m. main card start like normal. Um, there's an incredible uh, incredible lineup of fights. Uh, that Jim Miller, uh, Jared Gordon fight, I'm really looking forward to almost as much as the main event. And hey. uh, again, Alex Caceres, uh, Pineda. He, Alex never in a fucking bad fight. He's always exciting. By the way, Caceres, four out of five fights he's won. He has quietly won his last four out of five, so uh, happy for him in the co-main. And this is a great card this Saturday night in Vegas. I, I was so I forgot to ask Kai. I was so happy that he had that 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 Uncle Ben quote. Oh, I know you are. It made me. Did did I show that I was happy that he? Knew you didn't that? indicate, but I I sensed it. Okay. Uh, I thought maybe I made a scene. No. I always say with great power uh, comes a little responsibility, although delegated if possible. His quote was probably better. Tonight, 7 p.m., you can hear jokes like that at the Fat Black Pussycat here in New York. You can hear great material like that. <laughs> uh, the show's been selling out every week, so see if you want to come by if you're, if you're in New York. 7 p.m., Fat Black. And um, can't wait to do uh, the Burt Kreischer uh, the 18th, I'll be in New Hampshire with Bert and Tiffany Haddish and a bunch of Big Jay Okerson. And then um, looking forward to Rogan's Club. Both early shows are sold out July 14th and 15th at uh, Comedy Mothership. I'm doing Joe's Club. And uh, the late shows have some tickets, but the uh, both early shows are sold out July 14th. And when are you going to be there? For Joe's July 14th, 15th at Comedy Mothership. I got a call, a text from our friend Joe Rogan yes. on Memorial Day. Now look, I haven't texted with Joe in a while. You know what yeah. I mean? So I was like, yeah, I, I thought maybe I was getting fucking sure. Like he goes, yeah, I just spoke to Dean Thomas. He goes, you know, first it's like, hey, what's up, brother? It's Joe Rogan. He goes, I just spoke to Dean. Spoke to Dean Thomas. He thought it'd be cool. You know, it'd be fun if we all if you guys did my podcast. What do you think? So I'm like, now look, before I answer back, I'm like, wait. Somebody fucking with me. I might be somebody fucking. Might be a little yeah. Jimmy. You think, hey, no. we doing it? You know, you did that one thing with Tony Ferguson that time. So, <laughs> I I text the dean. I go, hey dean, is is this really Joe? He goes, nah. I just spoke to him. I go, okay. So then I texted back. So we're gonna do uh great. Like, oh, dean Tom, it's gonna like, end of the month. They're gonna be taking a taking a, a ride out, a fly out to a a flight out to Texas. Have fun, buddy. So I'm Jimmy. Yes, and I'm going to see Joe uh, I'm when I'm down there as well. So, what's that? I said, you know, I'm plugging this podcast because yes, you. We want this to go on forever. And I do love it. And ever and ever and Jimmy. Yeah, <laughs> Jimmy, we have such a good time. All right, we plugged the fights. You plugged your fat black, black. pussy cat. Yes. Good. SarahBJJ.com. Yes, and good luck to your uh, your daughters this weekend. Oh, and my wife. Yeah, they're gonna. Yeah, all your wife's do. That's right. Yeah, good luck to the family. Limbs. Well, you know this. You know how this works. We either win or we learn. We got, yep. we got that white belt mentality. And Jimmy, I will be talking to you shortly. Okay, pal. Good seeing you. Thanks, Tom. You soon. soon. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye.